Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we've got questions on blocking, how to deal with long hair, and how you can get better at your spike timing when you're at home. My name's Coach Adi. I create volleyball content to make you the best volleyballer inside and out. Let's get started on making you a better volleyballer right now. Blocking, I seem to either be too close to the net that I touch it or too far away that the ball goes down on my side. Any suggestions? Now, blocking, like spiking, is a really complicated skill to get better at because it's over in an instance and it's really hard to reflect on when you can't see yourself do it. A lot of the time, it's easier to give feedback to somebody else than it is to give to ourselves because it's really hard to see what ourselves are doing in moments just at the net. So consider this. As always, when we're trying to get better at an isolated skill, blocking, setting, digging, serving, record yourself, record yourself. I say it all the time and there's a reason for it. Because when you record yourself, you can actually see what your body is doing. There's a big difference to knowing how it feels to do a skill and knowing what it looks like to do a skill. So please record yourself. It may be a bit embarrassing at the start because you may be the only one recording yourself, but if you want to get better, this is a really easy ticket to get there. Once you've recorded yourself, the two questions I want you to consider is before you jumped, how far away from the net were you? And the second question is, how far did your hands go over the net? Your problem is an interesting one because it sounds like you've explored going closer and further away from the net. So if you reflect on where you start and where your hands end, you may be able to find and explore the best place to jump off and the best place for you to push all the way over. Do you have enough vert to get your elbows over the net? Or do you have enough vert just to get your wrists over the net? Knowing this will make a massive difference. So record yourself, reflect, and explore. The next question is, are there exercises, drills to improve reaction time? I'm having a hard time digging spikes and it always seems like my body reacts late. Now, this is a very interesting subject that I have a strong opinion on. And that opinion is, reaction time doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Everyone thinks it's all about reaction time in volleyball and in fast sports, but in reality, it's not. It's about your reading ability. Context matters, and it's the most important part when you're reacting to something. Reaction time doesn't mean anything if you don't know what you're reacting to. There's this old show where a softball pitcher would go around and interview famous baseball players, and at the end of the interview, the softball player would pitch to the baseball batter. And in every single one that I saw, the batter was bowled out every single time. Now, we're talking about the best here, the best batters, the batters that need the best reaction time in the world. For example, batters in baseball need to start their hitting action before the pitch even leaves the hand of the pitcher. So that's the reaction time we're talking about. But it doesn't mean anything if they don't know what they're reacting to because a softball pitch is completely different to a baseball pitch. What the baseball batters got really good at is reading the pitcher, not reacting to the action. And that's the same thing in every sport. We need to learn how to react to the context of the skill, not just the finish point of the skill. So for spiking, if you wanna get better at spiking, you need to get better at reading the spiker. Not just reacting after they hit the ball, but reacting and reading before they hit the ball things to look at, especially when they're in the air as a spiker. Hips, shoulders, elbow, hand, and thumb. Explore those ideas, explore reading those things. I'm not gonna tell you what happens when things change, I want you to explore that for yourself. Good luck, read, don't react. Next question, what to do with long hair and volleyball? Hello, I'm a volleyball player with kind of long hair, the often cause problems while playing. Yep, I know how you feel. I've had long hair for a really long time and it has been a pain sometimes while I play volleyball. And yes, technically when your hair touches the net, it's technically not a net touch, but a lot of refs don't actually know that. So it's really hard to play with. In my experiences, 
the most important thing is having good hair ties. There's a massive difference between cheap and good. So explore that. The next thing is my favorite hairstyles to do before I had locks was to do a nice tight bun or to braid my hair. Uh, that kept my hair out and it made me feel really good. And honestly, talk to pretty much any female that has played sport and they'll be able to give you recommendations and they'll probably uh, volunteer to braid your hair like so many have done for me. I had to learn how to braid my own hair. It was hard and yo, you do not realize how much your shoulders burn and damn, gave me a new respect for people who can braid their hair. Crazy respect because I literally braided my hair one day and my shoulders hurt the next day like lactic acid burn because my hands were up there for so long. So braids are really cool. Now that I have locks, they're really sort of, they stay in and they don't move that much. So yeah, uh, literally talk to any female that has played sport. They probably had a long hair at one point. Timing practice at home. Is there any possible way to train spike timing at home? Now, yes, there is, but I'm going to say straight away, it's not going to be as effective as training in the gym with a setter with a net so yes that's the best way to learn with a setter with a net in a game we're at home we're extremely limited but there's still ways you can learn look into mental training and what i mean by mental training is literally using your imagination and thinking about how you spike a volleyball practicing spiking in your head is really hard but you need to try and get as specific as possible you know, you're not just seeing the ball in your imagination and hitting it. You need to try and make sure it's as contextual as possible. There's a passer, there's a setter. You're running up to a spike, to a blocker. The more context you can get in your imagination, the better it's going to be. Also, go through your senses when you're imagining this. What do you hear? What do you see? What do you smell? What do you feel? You know, these things are really important and are going to make your mental training even more effective. The science around it, so give it a shot. Those were four great questions I loved answering. If you've got any questions, consider sending them into the Discord and I might be able to answer them in one of these videos in high detail. I really enjoy doing it. If you enjoy this format of video, please tell me in the comments because I really like it. It's really chill and I get to just answer volleyball questions and I really like that. So tell me in the comments. If you've got any other questions, hit up the comments. I may not be able to get around to all of them, but we're a learning community and we all want to help. You're better with your practice, so go practice your mental training. Hmm.